I know it's not saying a whole lot, but the Jets are getting their best wide receiver back from last year. The New York Jets and Jamison Crowder have agreed on a restructured contract. Welcome in, my name's Ryan, I'll be your pilot today. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back, I love having you here. Boys and girls, we are doing the ticket giveaway. If you want to be entered for a chance to win two tickets to the Jets' home opener against the New England Patriots, just leave a comment down below. You have to be subscribed, gotta leave a comment on the video. So, <laughs> we'll continue this throughout the uh, the whole offseason. Uh, but let's get on to our topic of the day. The New York Jets and Jameson Crowder have agreed to a restructured contract. Crowder's contract was initially a one-year deal with a cap hit of $11.4 million. $10 million of that uh, was going to be guaranteed to him if he was on the contract for this year. It was actually not guaranteed, so the Jets could have cut him at any point, saving that money. And it almost looked like that's kind of where that was headed because the Jets have a lot of firepower in this wide receiver room. And to think that last year Crowder was our best option and now he's to the point where he was almost expendable, um, kind of nice. It's a good, <laughs> good change of pace for our New York Jets. Uh, so as of recording this video, the deal hasn't been released as to what it is. Um, there were rumors that the Jets wanted him to take at least a 50% cut. So the fact that this got done leads me to believe it's probably somewhere near that. Like maybe it's a one-year, $6 million deal uh, instead of, you know, the $10 million that it was going to be or $5 million that it could have been. So interesting nonetheless. If I was Crowder, I'd be a little peeved. I'd be pretty irritated um, given everything you've given to the organization the last two years to have them kind of chop down your salary when they have plenty of salary cap space uh, to keep you anyway. Probably a little little, uh, little ticked off, maybe. Um, but Jets-wise, really good move. Great move for the New York Jets. Uh, and one of those things is like, look, you could have cut Jameson Crowder, saved that $10 million, and it's not just $10 million for this year. It rolls over into next year. So you have to keep that in mind when you're talking about these players. And I like the idea of holding on to Crowder. One, he's our strongest veteran offensive player coming back, aside from like, you know, maybe some of the offensive line pieces or whatever. But Definitely our best wide receiver coming back. And with a rookie quarterback, you want to have as many weapons and options as possible for him to, to really target here. And looking at this wide receiver room, you've got Corey Davis, Denzel Mims, Elijah Moore, Keelan Cole, Braxton Barrios, and Crowder. This team is like a solid five, if not six wide receivers deep. And for me, when I'm looking at this restructured deal, the first thing in my mind is that Crowder now becomes trade bait for another team. And it's not that I don't want to hold on to Crowder, but I think given his this, the role that he plays in our offense and the emergence of what it sounds like is going to be a really exciting wide receiver in Elijah Moore uh, and the backup option that is Braxton Barrios, the Jets really kind of have a crowded slot uh, in this offense. So I don't know if we're really going to, to hold on to him the entire season. It's good that we did restructure this because if we do hold on to him, yeah, we save a little bit of cap space. But then we also could potentially get a compensation pick, you know, if the Jets didn't go free agent crazy next offseason, which I kind of think they are going to anyway. Um, but as a trade option, this this is going to be really interesting. The trade deadline is right around the beginning of November. So watch for Crowder and any teams that lose a slot wide receiver or hurt and are looking for that little extra piece that might give them a, a nice boost because Crowder is like a top three, if not top five slot in the NFL. So definitely a trade chip. What are you going to get for him? I don't know. Mid-round pick probably. Uh, that'd be all right. That's fine by me because we're probably letting him walk at the end of the year, you know, regardless. Uh, in terms of the cap space that the Jets wind up saving, uh, like I said, I don't know the contract right now, but there's going to be a few names that we could watch at positions of need. And there's three that I'm kind of looking at right here. Obviously, offensive line, cornerback, and backup quarterback are the three things that we're kind of taking a look at. So first up, Let's talk offensive line. Morgan Moses, the right tackle from the Washington football team. One of the best offensive linemen out there right now, and I'm a little surprised why he hasn't signed yet, but the Jets have plenty of money to bring him in. I would think this should be our top option given the health concerns with Becton right now. It allows you to kind of be a little more flexible with your offensive line. Last year, Morgan Moses was paid $8.7 million dollars. So maybe you're looking somewhere in that wheelhouse, maybe a little bit less, given that the salary cap has gone down and he's kind of sitting out on the open market. Uh, he is over 30 years old, so, you know, father time, not really on his side as well. But I would love to sign him for like a two-year deal. That would be 
pretty sweet. I'd, I'd be all about that. Uh, the next player up would be Steven Nelson, the cornerback from the Pittsburgh Steelers. I've said for a while now that I do really want Richard Sherman, but the more and more this kind of drags on, the more and more I realize <laughs> Sherman has never played on the East Coast. Went to school at Stanford, was a Seattle Seahawk, stayed as a, you know, in that division as a as a 49er. He wants to go to a contender. The Jets just are not that right now. So more than likely that is not going to happen. But Nelson, that's a name that a lot of people have really been kind of keeping their keeping their ear on, keeping their eye on. Whatever. A lot of people are kind of interested in him. Last year, he was a $7 million cap hit, so maybe somewhere in that wheelhouse as well. Unless he's kind of sitting on the open market because he wants a longer-term contract, he is a little bit on the younger side. If I do remember, I didn't write that down on here, uh, so sorry. <laughs> um, the last option is potentially backup quarterback, and with Nick Mullins going to the Philadelphia Eagles today, uh, that kind of takes away some of the, the players that I was sort of thinking that the Jets could that the Jets could go after from that 49ers team. So if we're looking at potentially a backup quarterback with some type of connection to Joe Douglas and the coaching staff, I'm looking at Nick Foles. I'm keeping my eye, eye on that situation. He's not really my ideal backup quarterback, but for one year, I could probably roll with that. I think he could help Morgan a lot. I think he could kind of provide some some leadership aspects to, to the whole Wilson thing because we know he's not coming in to be the starter like that's it's not like it was back in you know Chicago or where he's going to push the starter that much harder uh, he does have two years remaining on his contract it would be a four million dollar cap hit this year and an eight million cap hit next year now more than likely you would cut Foles at the end of this season because he has a roster bonus due at the end of March for an additional four million dollars so it would be a four million dollar caps well i guess it'd be eight million cap savings you wouldn't have to pay him any money there's there's no no money on the hook for the jets if they decide to cut him after this year uh what you'd be willing to give up for him i don't know i'm not really looking to give up a whole heck of a lot for a backup quarterback i'd rather just kind of sign a guy that's sitting out there in free agency or just say screw it we're going with zach wilson and you know james morgan he's going to be our backup and we're just going to ride or die with it and if we stink oh well we're not going to the playoffs anyway Let's just bottom out and we'll get a, a higher draft pick and kind of figure it out next year. So that's kind of where my head's at. Love the restructured deal. Really happy uh, that Crowder's back in the fold. I hope he, you know, I hope he's a little bit happier. <laughs> Maybe not. Hopefully we get something for him either at the trade deadline or he just stays on our roster and provides a solid depth and a key veteran coming back. So guys, let me know what you think of the restructured deal down below in the comments. How do you want to spend the salary cap space that we saved? Do you want to bring in an offensive lineman, a cornerback, a backup quarterback? What are you looking to do here? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, go Jets.